So let's resume our session. With us, we have now Jérôme Saint-Louis from Quebec in Canada. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm uh, Jérôme Saint-Louis from uh, HRA in, uh, in Canada. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you about our uh, multi-purpose format for uh, tiling geospatial data, for storing geospatial data in, in uh, different types of geospatial data. Uh, just to give you a, a little bit of an overview of what uh, Gnosis is. Um, so in 2014, we started building this um, entire uh, geospatial software stack. Uh, and basically, the main components, uh, we have a visualization toolkit. Uh, we have a, a cross-platform library uh, for visualization using a hardware-accelerated uh, rendering, OpenGL. And we also have a map server. And we also have a, uh, a GIS tool. Uh, and things you can do in the GIS tool um, include things like producing the tiles, styling your data, uh, importing different types of data sources. And so that's, that's the basic thing. And all of this is built on top of a, a more general purpose software development kit that we've been developing since uh, 1997, even some of it goes back to 1996, uh, which is our HRE SDK, which is all uh, open source. Uh, it's actually part of the uh, official repository on, on Debian and Ubuntu, it's HRE SDK package. Um, it started out as a uh, a game per a game library, basically, to, to be cross-platform. Um, supports OpenGL, supports Direct3D. And we also built a, a full cross-platform toolkit, a GUI toolkit, so you can uh, build applications. And uh, it's cross-platform now. You can run them on Linux. You can run them on uh, Windows, on uh, Android, on the Mac. Now you can do WebAssembly. Uh, we have it on Odroy, on Tizen, which runs on my uh, Samsung watch, and FreeBSD. So it's very, very cross-platform from the bottom up. And so sort of Gnosis sits on top of this whole SDK. Uh, so that's the basic idea. And uh, we also have our own programming language, which is called EC, uh, which is compiled and native. And, and all of our software is, is built uh, in EC. Uh, so what EC is, it's a superset of the C language, so it's compiled and native. And then we add things like uh, object orientation, properties, reflection, dynamic modules, sort of the sort of features you find in modern uh, programming language. So so you get the, the best of both worlds. You can uh, efficiently, rapidly code very fast and high performance code. And that's why we, we use it to, to build uh, Gnosis. So uh, eclang.org is our, uh, the home of our language. The language was designed in 2004. So this is just sort of the background for my talk here. So, um, And then what we have is the, the Gnosis map tiles, which is the focus of this talk. Um, which is uh, basically an open format to store geospatial data. And the types of geospatial data you can store in there uh, and includes, of course, vector features, so points, polygons, uh, lines, and then uh, imagery. <coughs> um, and you can also store gridded coverages like uh, elevation models. You can also store point clouds. Uh, so we're working on importing uh, all the contents of uh, LAS files into this format. And we can also either embed or reference 3D models with sort of a, a position and orientation of the 3D models and referencing a, a shared 3D model. And we also have a, a, a format for encoding 3D models in a, a very efficient way, which is called E3D. There's a link here to the uh, draft specifications for E3D. Uh, but you could also use other formats like GLTF, for example, to encode the, uh, the models either inside the tiles themselves or reference to share them as you have tiles with points and then each point point to the, the same models that you want to have at uh, different places if it's uh, then they're instantiated if you have uh, geotypical uh, models. Um, and the, the big advantage of the Gnosis map tile, so it's, it's all, it all works with the quad tree system. So you have, as you go, uh, you, zoom, you zoom out, you get your lower resolution data. So it's, it's all quad tree based. And so, that's, so we do generalization of the vector feature. So it, it's similar to the map box vector tiles uh, concept as well for, for vector data or the GeoTIFF tile pyramids. It's, it's the same idea. Uh, but just the nice thing is you have one format that can store all of these uh, different types of geospatial data. 
And we actually uh, design a global grid, which works well with the uh, WGS84 uh, coordinate reference system. And the advantage of the Gnosis global grid is that uh, you're not, um, when you go to the polar regions, uh, you don't waste data because we try to, uh, to approximate uh, equal area. So that's uh, the next slide is about that. So I'll talk a bit more about that in the next slide. Uh, but does also so this is the sort of the, the tiling scheme we've been using with uh, Gnosis map tile so far. But we could also there's no reason why we could not uh, you uh, use this with other tiling schemes like, like the the classic web mercator or any other uh, uh, tiling scheme. Uh, the focus of the, the format is, is to be compact, so it's, it's all binary representation of uh, the vector data. Uh, it's, it uh, uses techniques like uh, uh, localization of the coordinates, so you can use uh, as little bit as possible, but still have good precision. And it's also designed with the performance of client-side uh, hardware accelerated rendering in mind. So that's sort of the main purpose of this because uh, all our software, what we do is a lot of 3D visualization. So uh, we want a high frame rate and all this. Uh, a lot of the background, uh, so that, that's a link up there to the, uh, the GMT format specifications that you can take a look. Uh, but it's slightly outdated right now because uh, during the OGC test bed 14 last year, uh, we were working on this uh, city GML and augmented reality uh, task. And as part of this, we, we, we did a lot of enhancement and uh, those are not yet, I have not made it yet into that. Uh, I was hoping to do that before this talk, but I didn't have the chance. So this talk is actually more uh, uh, up to date right now at the bottom. Uh, so this is the, the, the global grid that I was talking about. Uh, I don't know if you can see well here, but uh, basically the, the whole world is divided uh, at the level zero into eight tiles. So the uh, north hemisphere is four tiles, the south hemisphere is four tiles. They're all 90 degree by 90 degree tile. Uh, if you're familiar with the, uh, the blue marble next generation uh, distribution uh, from NASA, it's the same, uh, the same tiles that you have there. Uh, and then when you go to the next zoom level, uh, the rule is very simple. It's an uh, it's almost a quad tree, but every time you go to the next level, uh, you, well, you cut in four. But if your tile touches the pole, you, you don't cut the part that touches the pole. So you end up with uh, only three tiles instead of four uh, for the part that touches the pole. So that's, that's the simple rule. Um, you can see. Here, that's the next level down. So you'll have uh, wider tiles at the pole and uh, a bit smaller and a bit smaller. So, so the idea is that the, the, the tiles actually don't look distorted when you look at them, even though you're using WGS84 because it's approximating the equal area. So it's not, of course, it's not exactly equal area, but the, the, the compromise is that it makes it easy because it's easy to cut because it's aligned with the latitude and longitude lines. And the main purpose of this is that it's great for 3D because in your 3D view, uh, you can mix different levels. So the tiles closer to you will be higher resolution and the tiles further behind will be bigger tiles, uh, lower resolution data. And the great thing is the upcoming uh, OGC tile matrix set standard will support uh, variable uh, with tile matrices like these. So that's, we can officially describe this in the new uh, uh, tile matrix set standard that's coming. So that's about it. Uh, the details about this format and some code to uh, to compute the tiles and, and all this is uh, is here on this link. And now to talk a little bit about how the data, the vector data, is actually stored inside the tiles. So uh, if you have polygon data, which is the, the more uh, complex case, uh, that the, the polygons are actually pre-tessellated uh, using a Delaunay uh, tessellation. Uh, something I forgot to include in the slide as well, is we'll also include the, the center line after the Delaunay tessellation, but before the tiling, so that you can have your nice curved labels uh, on your lakes and your rivers and all that. Um, it's also it's, it's ready for the GPU to render because it's already tessellated and GPUs work with triangles. So you have your vertices and your indices all ready to, to uh, throw at the, at the GPU. 
Uh, we also share uh, share vertices, of course, with indices. The, the indices index the different vertices. So at the same point, it will only be encoded once. So there's it's a safe storage. But it also ensures that it's topologically correct when we're describing the polygon with a, uh, a triangle mesh like that. Uh, each vertex is quantized uh, to the local tile extent uh, using 16-bit uh, for both the latitude and uh, the longitude for, for each vertex. So uh, we maximize the precision by using the, the minimum uh, uh, amount of storage. And all of this we store in a direct uh, file-based data store as opposed to inside a database. So we have the very fast access. But in order to not have like a very, very large uh, number of files, we regroup them in tile pyramids uh, with some range uh, of zoom levels. Uh, so this, this way we have a, a reasonable number of files versus a reasonable file size for, for each uh, tile pyramid. And the attributes for the vector data are stored separately in a SQLite database so that you can do your, your fast queries and uh, so get information about the data. Um, Oh, the, the other one thing I forgot to mention about the polygon is we also, uh, so the, the, the tiles are actually clipped exactly at the boundaries uh, rather than using an overlap. And the way we resolve, uh, for example, when we have a polygon and the, the tiles cut straight through, we'll mark the, uh, the vertices that, or the, the segments that were artificially introduced by, by flags of the vertices saying that uh, the, these are where the tiles reconnect together. Uh, so it's easier to, to reconstruct the topology of the, the whole uh, data together and work with, with it uh, for data analysis purposes, not only uh, visualization. Um, so the, the future roadmap for this is uh, we're still working on maybe a version uh, which is contour based instead of a triangular mesh. That would be another encoding option. And uh, this may have so, some advantages. It may make it a bit smaller. So we're uh, studying this uh, right now. We're also uh, trying to improve compactness. I think we can get it uh, even more compact. Uh, so it's going to help transfer uh, speed and uh, processing speed and all that. Uh, we're also doing additional testing with the visualization and storage of point clouds. So, so the idea with point cloud is that you do we have multi-resolution point clouds, so you could have the whole world as a huge point cloud. And as you zoom in, uh, the, your uh, your quad uh, tree, you, you get your uh, more dense data, right? So you, you can do clustering or you can do filtering of the point cloud as as you go to the lower version. Uh, so we're, we're still working on actually testing this in practice. And uh, also, uh, so we, we have the, the 3D visualization or the 3D models. We, we have some prototypes of that, but uh, we're going to do additional testing uh, to have, uh, there's a model where we can do spilling. So uh, instead of cutting the models, you can have sort of spilling onto the next style. And, and right now, so we're, we're working on, we, there's some provisions for that in the standard, but we uh, have to do additional tests uh, of, of that. To, to make sure that you're not missing models because uh, there's a model from the tile behind that you could actually see uh, in the tiles that you have uh, selected for your view. And it would be great if we could uh, have support for this in other tools like uh, GDAL and OGR and then all of the uh, other tools that use GDAL and OGR could, could use this. So we're interested in, in contributing uh, uh, support for this or helping with the development of this if there is interest. Um, so these are some uh, screenshots uh, using our, our tile. So this is uh, Google Maps imagery draped on the uh, uh, digital elevation model from uh, viewfinder panoramas, which is tiled uh, as GMT. And this is another, again, Google Maps with the viewfinder panorama. And the thing is, we, we, we can do like nice frame per second. It's just go anywhere in the world, and right away the, the tiles come up. It's very fast. Uh, this is the 3D, uh, 3D. This is actually sourced from CDB from Flight Safety. So that was in the uh, OGC testbed uh, 13 and uh, testbed 14 uh, innovation program uh, activities. Uh, so th this is actually all, all the layers are converted to GMT. So the imagery, the terrain, the 3D models, it's all converted to, uh, to GMT and uh, E3D uh, model encoding. And uh, this is another uh, same uh, same data set, but another view with uh, Central Park. Same idea. And uh, 
This is uh, OpenStreetMap. It's hard to see right now. Uh, so this is OpenStreetMap converted to uh, to GMT layers and has vector data with with styles applied. Uh, we're still working on improving the the styling of this. And tomorrow, my my talk will focus about our, our styling language for uh, for styling uh, vector data mostly. And yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know how much time we have. If we have some extra time, I, there's some videos I could show, or we could do questions. We have five minutes. Five minutes, yeah. and then questions. So I could and then show, questions, yeah. show one video. Maybe. Don't forget your microphone. So, so this is an uh, example here. So this is actually uh, using 3D tiles here, uh, but then we're converting the, the 3D tiles into our Gnosis map tiles, uh, or so uh, to import into uh, into our system. Uh, see, both CDB and 3D tiles, we have a, a system to import it and then uh, convert it into our Gnosis map tiles, which our engine uh, uses internally. Uh, so, so that's the data set that I was showing earlier from flight safety. Uh, and this is, so you can see this, the whole, you know, have the whole earth, you can have different layers, so uh, all of this you can uh, you can show. So this is the CDB version. Uh, the ele elevation model, again, is stored in, uh, in CDB, and then we can import it into our, our Gnosis map. Also, it's, it's very easy, very portable. You get, the, you save storage space, too, so that's, uh, that's it. But this is much of the same thing. So, yeah. thank you. Any questions? Okay, you can show another video if you want. Or okay, we can sure. Go into the questions. Show another video. Um. You could do a right click or do the SDD before. Ah, okay. Um, so it would be interesting. Um, this is what this. One. So this is gives a, just an overview of a bit uh, our, our whole uh, what we can do. So the the whole earth, uh, different layers. Um, the idea is to have a high performance, right? And uh, so we're still working on deploying the, the web version, but technically using WebGL and WebAssembly, we, we can go get the, the same amount of performance with the, the clients. That's the great thing about client-side rendering, and the, the great thing about the, the Gnosis map tile is you minimize the, the data you have to send, and it's easy to cache uh, on the client side. So this is a, a very high-resolution uh, model. This is actually from photogrammetry, and this is actually a, a KML model that's uh, placed on top. Yes, we can uh, still interact with the mesh, so it's not only visualization. It's going to show some of the, uh, this is the natural earth, and then we're going to do some styling. So we have a labeling engine, too, uh, that works with that. Like I was saying earlier, it's nice to have in, in your polygon tiles, you have the uh, um, the center lines before it was styled, so you can apply some uh, some curved labels, but that's, that's still something we're actually uh, implementing. Uh, but the, the format uh, supports that. This is styling. Uh, this is actually vector data draped on top of the the model. This is the land coverage from uh, New Zealand uh, with vector style uh, styling applied to the the polygons. Uh, Where's the data coming from? This is from the the lens, lens or uh, 
one of the New Zealand agency. I have it up on our website. The link is there with the source. Uh, this, this is showing the uh, the Android version, touch interface layers. So while the film is rolling, we can pass on to the questions. Who wants to ask something from Jerome? Uh, you're all uh, <laughs> marveled with the video. This is the small Odroid device. It's a very tiny thing. It's a bit like a Raspberry Pi, but it has a GPU in it, so you can get nice performance. Sorry, go ahead. Um, am I correct in understanding that it's meant as a storage uh, format on computers and not so much as a delivery format for the web? So we're using it for both, actually. So now in, a, in our OGC API service, when you, when you uh, request a tile, you can ask for it in the, the GMT format. So it can come in uh, this way. But we also have a data store to store it locally. And actually, the, the data store for our Gnosis server is the GMT format. Uh, but you can on the fly request different extent, and you can convert it to Mapbox vector tiles or GeoJSON or GML. Uh, and it's going to do the, the translation on the fly from that. So you, you have the choice. Uh, but uh, for our client, we, we, that's our preferred uh, data exchange mechanism. So it, it is meant for, for the data delivery. Who else would like to intervene? Uh, so, yeah, okay. Uh, is it all about pre processing? So, you have prepared all the tiles in advance, or are there any thoughts about having some real time uh, data in, in tiles? Uh, I'm not sure I understand that. So, so our preferred approach is uh, to, like, for example, if we import some shape files or some other formats that we support, uh, we'll do the conversion and prepare our, our uh, GMT archives. But if you want, you can also see it live from a shape file or from some other uh, format driver and, and you visualize it live. And internally, we'll use uh, something close to that data model. Is that, does that answer the question? I think maybe so. Like, if you want to display like moving objects, uh, that like your streaming data about vehicles or whatever, and you you can put it. Are you able to put it into the tiles, or are you like just rendering it next to the tiles? Uh, well, it's just. I guess it, it depends of the, the what, what would be the advantage to tile it. If it, it depends how much data you have, right? Like, yeah, uh, I'm not sure. As far as I understand your question is that you have static data that, that are rendered and shown and combine it with real time data. So we of course we can we can do that. We can combine dynamic layers on top of the tiles. Uh, but as, I'm wondering if you mean do you want to tile that dynamic data and then show it, or it's. Uh, yeah, I'm not suggesting you have to do either, but yeah. well, we have, like, our, our engine, about our engine can do it. Yeah, but yeah. but I mean, and you could cool. convert it to tile and then show it and then retile it again. But if you keep, if the data keeps changing, there's yeah. not really a point yeah. to uh, to put it in in a tile in that intermediate step, okay. right? Okay. Well, yeah. One last quick question. Okay, so we will leave it there. The session resumes at half past five. Thank you very much, Gerald. Thank you very much.